The Corsair K63 Wireless lets you experience cable-free gaming with genuine Cherry MX switches, long-lasting battery life, and per-key backlighting. It's the same high-quality Corsair keyboard you love with no strings attached. To learn more, click on the link below for more info. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, hope you're all doing well. So I'm gonna build another PC today, but it's not actually gonna be a gaming PC. This one is uh, mainly for video playback purposes. A buddy of mine who works in the office building here has his own company, he's a lawyer, he's a cool guy. Uh, he actually needs a video playback PC, not for home theater purposes, but actually for his work. He uh, specializes in sports attorney law business. I'm sure there's a very proper word or phrase for that, but uh, he used to actually play in the NFL. And I'm not sure if he's comfortable with me sharing his identity, so I'm gonna keep it anonymous for now. But he used to be an NFL player back in the day, and uh, now he, he works in the courtroom on behalf of professional athletes. And he needs a very simple PC that can play a video back to the jury so that he can show uh, the effects of long-term athleticism on professional sports players. So an example that he gave me was baseball players who after swinging a bat for 15 years plus, some things start to go loose. Their joints wear out. There's It's huge wear and tear on the body. And so he has to be able to show that to a courtroom uh, in order to make his case. That's a very high level overview of what he does. But basically he needs a very simple PC. So we're gonna help him out today and build him exactly that. So let's just dive right into the parts here. Um, this is really a great time. He, he approached me at the perfect time because the Ryzen uh, APUs just came out with the Vega graphics. This one in particular is the Ryzen 3 2200G for $99 MSRP. You're getting a fantastic four core, four thread Ryzen chip along with built-in integrated Vega graphics. And this is uh, of course the Vega 8 graphics with eight GPU cores and it is overclockable. I'll probably overclock it for him. The motherboard we're using is one that you've seen probably featured on the channel a couple times now. It's the Gigabyte AB350N Gaming Wi-Fi, which obviously means it's oriented towards a gaming audience, but of course, it can be used for non-gaming purposes as well. It's mini ITX, so you can tell we're going with the small form factor build here. Um, and uh, obviously it has Wi-Fi from the name, which is gonna be very useful in the courtroom, I would imagine, and an M.2 slot, a bunch of other nice features there. So he'll be happy with that. For memories, we've got eight gigabytes of Rip Jaws 5. This is of course from G-Skill. This is DDR4 memory at 2400 speed. We've also got our single drive, for this system, which is WD Black M.2. This is their PCIe NVMe drive, which is about 99 bucks for a 256 gig model. And it's really the only drive he's gonna need because the video files that he's playing on this thing are gonna be relatively small. And that's mainly what he's gonna use this system for. He may use it for some productivity slash, you know, Microsoft Office applications, but nothing that's gonna really need a bunch of storage. So there should be plenty for his needs. And of course, there's always room for expansion in the ever so popular and one of my favorite mini ITX cases till this day, the Fractal Design Node 202. You guys know if you've been following the channel for a while that I love this case, I've been using it a long time. Also fun fact, this is actually my personal case that I've been using for over a year now, but that's only for the purpose of this video because I'm still waiting for a fresh unit to arrive from Fractal Design. Once that gets here, I'm actually gonna gut the system out and put all these components in the brand new, the brand new case because um, I, I don't wanna send our client home with, uh, with a scratched up, slightly modified chassis. Um, but I love this case. I think it's gonna look really nice for him in the courtroom. It's, it's, it's got a very professional look to it. Uh, it's not all flashy and you know gamery and stuff. So I think he'll dig it. And I like the fact that it can be vertical or horizontal. So he has those options there. But those are our parts, ladies and gentlemen. You, you should also bear in mind that this is an extremely simple build. Um, we've got one, two, three, four, five retail products. I mean, and there's technically eight components in here. I should mention, this is the model that includes the power supply. That's the one he's getting. So there's already a power supply in here, 450 watt, 80 plus bronze unit. Um, ketchup and mustard cables, but that's okay. And there is the included Wraith Stealth inside of the Ryzen 3 2200G package here. So we got CPU cooling down as well. We got a nice overhead camera here, getting all fancy. Wifey sauce is on the B cam or the C cam, whatever you want to call it. And I have beer. So we are all primed for this here build. Let's get started. We got pre-applied thermal paste on our Wraith Stealth, so 
That'll save us a whole three seconds. Thanks, AMD. My only one complaint about this motherboard is that I wish there were more fan headers. There's only two, and you know, one of those gets eaten up by your CPU cooler, of course. And you, you would think it's a, it's a fairly feature forward motherboard that I could see a lot of people putting inside of like a much bigger mini ITX case than the Node 202, which would probably have more than one case fan in it, not to mention the potential for radiators and stuff, so. Slim pickings on them fan headers. Now, one thing to point out is that since we're not dealing with a discrete GPU, we don't have to fiddle around with what's arguably the worst part about the Note 202. By that, I mean the PCIe riser card. We've got two PCBs here that snap together like so. One end goes into the PCIe slot on your motherboard, and the other one kind of passes through this little cutout slot of the Note 202. And there's three standoffs on the wall of the case that you use to mount the larger PCB. And it can be kind of a pain in the ass to get in there. Once it's installed, it all works fine in the end, but uh, I'm really glad we don't have to deal with this this time around. The other benefit to having such a simple system like this with only an M.2 drive for our storage solution is that we don't have to bother with any SATA cables of any kind, which also at the same time kind of makes it a shame that we're dealing with a non-modular power supply because it would definitely tidy up things and give us a bit more room in here. But at the same time, we don't need this whole area for any drives. We don't have any drives other than the one that's directly mounted to the motherboard, so we can still stash all of this excess right there. Bend over, baby. Some of you guys may have noticed the slight modification that I made right here to the crossbar of our Node 202. That was basically so I could pass a uh, some radiator tubes, some liquid cooling AIO tubes right through here. So yes, we actually did water cool a CPU in this case at some point, which as a reminder, this case does not support AIOs natively. So that was super cool. And I felt really badass for doing that. Of course, some people argued it compromised the structural integrity of the case, but I think that's a bunch of bullocks, especially once the lid is on that provides more than enough support. But uh, like I said, we'll be giving our client a fresh case so he won't have to deal with my amateur mods. Now this is also where it gets interesting for small form factor cases like this, because mini ITX boards tend to have the most differentiated layouts from board to board. I kind of like the fact that the USB 3 header for this board is way over here. It works out well for this case because we get to stretch it across a little bit more. We get to utilize more of the cable. Front panel connectors are also on the polar opposite side here. This can sometimes backfire if the headers are so far away from where your front panel connectors stem from that uh, you can't physically reach. But no such problems here. I'm not gonna plug front panel audio in because it sucks. I should just cut that cable off, really. Snip, snap. And there's our cable management for the day. It's nothing spectacular, but it'll do. Well, would you look at that, folks? It is all done. Oh, that was that was a really quick, I mean, I edited this down obviously, but probably 20 minutes to build the whole thing. The fact that we didn't have a discrete GPU or any drives other than that single M.2 means this was a really straightforward build. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Should we turn it on? Should we just make sure it works? Yeah. <laughs> all right, this sucker is ready for takeoff. Falcon heavy status. So three, two, eight. Hey, the other nice thing about this system is that you have two fans, your CPU cooler and the power supply. I know for a fact, both of these are very, very quiet fans. So, um, and there's no LEDs really other than, you know, the power LED on the case. If it weren't for that, man, you would not know this system was idling or on, I should say, at idle. It is just, 
it is nothing short of a whisper. Next thing on the agenda is to load up Windows 10, install drivers, and this thing is good to get. I really do think that our client's gonna be happy with how this turns out. It's super quiet, it looks nice, and it's gonna perform very well for his needs. Yeah, no testing necessary, I think, this time around. Probably won't do any benchmarks or anything like that. There's already a ton of benchmarks on these Ryzen APUs, including my own, which I still need to do a follow-up video for. That's a whole other story, but that's all I got for now, guys. So if you enjoyed this video, if you liked it, then show me you like it by tossing a like on it. You can also check out good old Floatplane if you want to watch my videos a whole week early without ads. It's fantastico. Apart from that, guys, thank you so much for tuning into this one. I hope you guys have a good day, and I will see y'all in the next video.